When the Holy Spirit has His way in us, it's going to be seen through demonstrations of power, faith, purity, lifestyle, but it's all going to be also going to be the endurance yeah. until the miracle comes. So do you believe that it's God's will to heal everyone? Is that like <laughs> Bethel standard teaching or? A <laughs> I, I have to approach that it is. I have to approach that it's always God's will. And, uh, and my lead on that is everybody the Father sent Jesus to, he healed. Everyone who came to Jesus, he healed. Even, even the Syrophoenician woman, the one who would have been disqualified uh, because she wasn't, uh, wasn't a Jew. Yeah. He still was moved by her faith and healed her. So in following him, I have to take that approach. Mm-hmm. I have had two exceptions that I can think of. Yeah. Uh, one I've been praying. Uh, one, uh, one lady, as I was praying for, I could tell. You know, when, when you walk... When you walk sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you don't want to grieve, you don't want to quench. You're you're in that, you know, okay. you're walking that road in a relationship with him. I could tell that if I prayed for healing, it would grieve him. Hmm. And and so, so it was a different idea. It wasn't like if, if it's your Lord, if it's your will. Oh, no, or, no. no. So no, it's I, not I like um, having that um, in your prayer or in your thought life. Because in your, th- it's like practical theology, like you approach everybody like, the Lord's going to move right now. Yeah, yeah. And I can't pray if it's your will, because for me, that's a prayer of unbelief. Okay. Because he's already revealed to me it is his will. In his provision for healing, and personally, I use Isaiah 53, but you can, you know, you can come yeah. at it from many different angles. Yeah. It's an aspect of the kingdom, yeah. which is a present reality. Uh, Jesus made provision for it. So I have to, I have to pursue it in that light. Mm-hmm. And then, but in, in my, you know, it's appointed unto man to die. So there yeah. is a point of death. And uh, I, I don't know that that should be the subject now, but uh, yeah. uh, but uh, I remember praying for this lady. I was uh, visiting, as it was a mother of one of our staff members. And, uh, and I was in, she had been sick for a while. And as I was praying for her, I could tell she's supposed to go home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's supposed to go home, and that's an awkward. That's an awkward moment. It, it, it's not as a pastor because we're in those situations yeah. Yeah. often. But to to pray for that is is a bit awkward for me. I mean, I, I don't have the impartation of death, you know. Yes, to, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but to pray, Father, I, I I just pray that you just fill her with peace yeah. and that and that. In your perfect timing, you would take her home. She went home within, I think, two hours. Wow. She had been sick for a while. So there was something that took place just, I, I don't know. It was more like maybe releasing. You know, the, sometimes people will hold on because of a sense of obligation or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know how any of that works, so that's that's way above my pay grade. Yeah. But yeah. but there was that, that prayer of blessing and release, and, and the Lord took her home. So it's intriguing to me, though, because you, like, even though if you don't have it, if it's your will, but you do have the I will keep listening to the Holy Spirit's oh, yeah. voice as I'm moving in my prayer for this person. Absolutely. And so it's not quite a formula. Every once in a while, it feels a bit like that. Like, we, we kind of say... Just assume God wants to heal everybody because that was the model of Jesus. And so I think when we're talking to students, we're like, yeah, just have confidence. The Lord wants to to uh, heal everyone. Yes, yes. But you're modeling a little bit of like, so st- have faith, move in confidence, but keep listening? Well, uh, uh, I yes, absolutely. Okay. But but my listening isn't solved. That Is I, it going to happen, I, yes I, or no? <laughs> it's not so I can figure out, do they die or do they live? It's, yeah, okay. you know, it's not that. It's, I'm listening because what, what do you do? Yeah. Because sometimes I'll be praying for somebody and I can tell, oh, they need to forgive someone. Mm. And so I won't accuse them. I, I, I won't do I say, you have unforgiveness. I won't do that. Right, I'll, right. I'll just say, hey, just out of curiosity, uh, sometimes this helps us to, to mm-hmm. see somebody get healed. Um, can you think of anyone that you need to forgive? And I've had people say, oh, yeah. And I said, well, who, who would that be? And so they'll, they'll, they'll tell me. And I, I don't ask for great detail because sure. I, I, I don't need to embarrass anybody. Mm-hmm. But I say, how about we forgive them? And, and I've seen it time and time again. Wow. They say, okay. And they forgive them, and then they're healed. So I'm listening, not, not to see if they live or die, yeah, because uh, yeah. I expect them to live. I just want to know what do I, what do you want well, me to what do? What are you up to? What, yeah, yeah. What you know, Jesus at one point he just declares the word, "Go home, your servant is is, yeah. is alive. He's yeah. well." Uh, to another, uh, you know, uh, go wash in a pool of Siloam. You know, there's different directives at different times, and uh, and I've had moments in in a 
where I've given somebody a direction, uh, somebody who's missing a part of a muscle in their leg. Mm -hmm. And I said, just walk to the back and then come and see me. And by the time they got to the back and came back to see me, the the Lord had had, uh, done that miracle. So there was an action that was needed uh, for faith to be illustrated. Mm-hmm. It wasn't some noble act, you know. I'm not yeah. asking some guy to jump on his broken ankle. That's 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 not necessary. That's mm-hmm. showmanship, and we don't need that. Mm-hmm. But what we do need is to give people a, an action to connect their faith to. And uh, and and I've seen it time and time again. Uh, it may be the forgiveness issue. It may be uh, just a simple act of some mm-hmm. sort. But, uh, but even the forgiveness, but, you don't use it as a formula. Like, no, I, I, it's no. just, you're probably sick because you have unforgiveness. No. Like, it, it's not that. No. It's you're listening for the no. leading of the Holy Spirit in that moment. What's the step of growth and transformation for this beloved person that's in front of you? Exactly. How can I help? How can I be part? So exactly. This, this, G- Jesus didn't use that formula. That's the reason I don't. Yeah. Yeah, he, he didn't, he didn't, there he didn't <laughs> No, he didn't have that as a cookie-cutter response. Yeah. You know, he didn't have a, a three, four steps that he went through with each person. He, he did different. So I'm just trying to learn that. Yeah. yeah. So is it the role of faith then? Like how, is someone not healed because they didn't have enough faith? Is that what, is that like our standard line? Like you weren't healed because you didn't have enough faith. How does, so what's that relationship of faith, faith and healing? Is, faith is an issue. I would never want to downplay it because Jesus honored it, you know, when he saw it. You know, mm-hmm. he said, man, I haven't seen such faith in all of Israel. Yeah. And so um, he would celebrate great faith. But the thing to remember is even when he saw tiny, tiny faith, uh, like the guy who says, if you can, you know, yeah, when yeah, you question yeah, God's yeah. ability, when, <laughs> if you can, would you heal my son? Uh, Jesus turns the table. He says, if you can believe, all things are possible to those Mm -hmm. who believe. So the point is, is that even where there was very small faith, he still brought the miracle, but he would address the level of faith before he did the miracle, I think, to give them access to move stronger in faith. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. so, but no, we we don't, we will, disciplines may be a hard word, but we will correct somebody on our team that mm-hmm. ever points to another person and says, you weren't healed because you didn't have faith. Yeah. That's cruel. Yeah. That's just cruel. Absolutely. And the scripture says it's the prayer of faith that heals the sick. Yeah. So it's not the person even who's coming. Sometimes I'll have people come and they say, man, I just don't even have faith for this. And there are times I feel, it's only happened a few times, but there are times I feel the presence of God, the word of the Lord in that moment so strong, I'll tell them, you don't have to have any faith. I have enough for both of us. Mm-hmm. I wish that was the standard, but it's not. It's just rare. <laughs> it's not, though. No, no. <laughs> I wish. But it, but I've had it happen. I've had yeah. it happen where I, yeah. I was so confident that God is on this moment. Yeah. that uh, And I know uh, usually when people are evaluating their faith, they come up short always. Yeah. And so they yeah. don't always know how to look for faith in their own life. And so that's why I try to steer them away from it. I say, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll believe for both of us. Yeah. And it's not to turn attention towards me, obviously. Right. But listen, I'll, I'll stand for both of us. And then we'll see a miracle. Yeah. And so we never turn it uh, towards the person. I want them to have great faith, of totally. course. We all want to be growing in faith. and Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But, I, but I'm not going to blame them for the outcome, mm-hmm. you know. We talk about sometimes that faith the Lord, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So yeah. faith's in the equation somewhere. Like yeah. faith needs to be operating at some level. Yeah. But um, we, we talk about just, it might be the prayer, it might be the prayee, it might be the environment. Yeah. And then we've all seen some unusual miracles when there's no faith. Like doesn't feel like we had much faith, doesn't feel like they had much faith and the Lord moved. So even it's, kind of like demanding it's there doesn't seem to make a ton of sense in in our practical experience yeah, where the exactly. lord's moved when neither one expected much to happen exactly <laughs> I, I treat faith like like I open a jar, whatever was in there just evaporated. So if I go look for faith in me it's it's just the wrong direction for me. Yeah. My approach is I can always obey I can always obey whatever you say and have confidence in who he is exactly yeah, I, yeah. I, I my obedience is based on who he is yeah he's given me a direction. Put your hand on the blind eye. I can sense that's what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I can always obey. At the end, I can look back and say, that took faith, or it's just raw obedience, or it's just, you know, the bottom line, it's always just the grace of God. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And I imagine it's a conversation with the Lord, too, because sometimes, I mean, once there's a miracle happens or it doesn't, it's like, Papa, what what was that about? What what happened there where you're trying to learn? Yeah. His ways yeah. in that moment, and then also what the Lord is up to in His multifaceted wisdom of you know, because yep. we've had folks who don't get healed in that moment, but weeks later, or yeah. 
you know, folks healed after eight years of, of, of being prayed for. Yeah. And you're like, Papa, what? Why now? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't ask why, but I want to learn what he's like. Okay, yeah. I don't, I don't need an explanation. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not offended by a process. Mm -hmm. I, I, I stay as far away from that as I possibly can. I don't analyze the situation. Why did this happen now, not before, or whatever. I just I celebrate when it happens. If it doesn't, that's where enduring faith comes in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I remember I was, in a, I was in a meeting where a gal came up for prayer, and I, and I just started to, you know, if we have a default, it's that we lay hands on somebody and pray. Yeah. And I just started to pray. They had arthritis in every joint of their body. Every part of their body, they were just crippled with pain. And I went to start to put my hand up, and I felt so strong. The Holy Spirit said, don't touch them. And then I thought, well, I'll just begin to pray. And he said, don't even pray. He said, just watch. Hmm. And so as I'm standing there talking to the person, I was trying to figure out, what do I do? What do I do? You know, Because there's got to be some point of, of contact for faith or something, you know. And I felt this, it's a little strange, but I felt this heat on the back of my neck. And I went, is the Lord touching your, your neck and your, your shoulder mm -hmm. area right now? And the lady went, yeah. I said, well, is there any pain left? She goes, no, there's none whatsoever. And then I, I started realizing, oh, the Lord is showing me Literally, I would have a sensation on my body, and I could tell what just got healed. Mm. So he wouldn't allow me to pray. He wouldn't allow me to touch, nor would he allow me to give the command, as Jesus did. Mm -hmm. he, would, he, would, he would give the command. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't allow me to do it. But, I, but he showed me uh, just my arms. I, I could feel this presence of God on my arms. I said, move your arms around. And they did yeah. until it went all the way down their knees and their feet, and they were completely healed. Wow. But it, it's, that, it's, the, it's the willingness it's the willingness to look mm -hmm. dumb, first of all. <laughs> you know, you, you, yeah. you, mm -hmm. you have to embrace that part. Because sometimes sometimes you're going to think you're hearing from God and you're not. Yeah. And you yeah. own up we to it. We don't perfectly yeah. hear. Yeah. yeah, we own up to it. But other times you do. And it it encourages you in the journey to live with the kind of risk that it takes to see those kinds of miracles. But I didn't pray one prayer, didn't command one thing, mm -hmm. didn't do anything that, that I would typically do in that context. And, and they were healed head to toe. Mm -hmm. I want to get back to enduring faith that you mentioned, and yep. but it, it strikes me that what you're saying it has a lot of nuance. And so sometimes when we teach, the nuance isn't there. We, you know, it's God's will to heal, uh, God's will to heal everybody. You know, just pray with right. faith, and here we go, and pray for your neighbor. So we'll lead in bold strokes sometimes um, yeah. that uh, that are necessary for people to break into new experiences. Or right. sometimes we don't know what the Lord will do in those moments when you just have people turn to the congregation and pray for each other and healing breaks out. So it's a, yep. there's a moment of faith, but you're describing, um, again, not a mechanism or a, a right you're asserting right. every time, but a relationship with the Lord that has beneficial for you and who you're becoming and the person you're praying for. Exactly. That exactly. seems like, like we could probably use some more of that nuance sometimes when yeah. people run into our message a little bit. But again, we don't want to get so nuanced that we, we quit praying with faith or joy yeah. or uh, integrity. So it's a bit of a dance, you know, yeah, when we I do don't, these things. I don't want to create a theology around what didn't happen. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. that's a really big deal for yeah. me. Um, my approach to the faith thing is, is I'll tell people, I say, listen, faith brings answers. Enduring faith brings answers with character. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we're in a journey, we're in a process, yeah. and the Lord is building. He's building us. He's not just doing something through us. Yeah. It's not just about the miracle or the deliverance or what, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. It's, it's about people becoming like Christ. Yeah. And yeah. enduring faith is a part of that. Uh, power, you know, the whole uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit for the purpose of power. Power was for the miracle, but it was also for the endurance until the miracle came. Mm -hmm. You see it all through the book of Acts. That both were manifestations. Mm -hmm. And so when the Holy Spirit has his way in us, it's going to be seen through demonstrations of power, faith, purity, lifestyle, but it's all going to be also going to be the endurance yeah. until the miracle comes. Yeah. So you've mentioned enduring faith. And, you know, as I think about this, like one of the amazing saints of our time has been Johnny Erickson Tata. And yeah. And um, I remember in the 70s when she had her accident, and she's, for those who don't know, an incredible heart for Jesus. I yes. got to see her speak about just about two years ago and was just so moved yeah. by the faith yeah. that she moves in and the faith of her husband, who, uh, her caregiver. It was, a, uh, it was a wonderful experience to see this yeah. saint of the Lord speak. Um, and I think about 
you know, that her situation of not having a breakthrough in healing and just finding the heart of the Lord for her in, in this season as well. And and as I contemplated, like, how would, Dan, how would you respond? And I'm like, probably not that beautifully, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And she's been super honest about, hey, there's some days I, you know, hate, I hate it all and I want to drive my caregivers away from me and all that. So she's been really transparent about this. But, but there's, I, I sometimes wonder in that deal of like, I would want to have faith that is enduring, like she's manifesting. Absolutely. I'd also want faith to still have somebody come in and lay hands on me every day or yeah. once a week. You know, I was yeah. trying to figure out how do we mix that beauty of what she's experiencing in the Lord in the midst of her trial <laughs> with our love of breakthrough and our love of the Lord alleviating suffering. Is that so? One of the ways I was kind of doing that was like, okay, I'd want to have faith like today could be the day. It's been 20 years. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet, but today it could be the day. Yeah. But also that that sort of coping, enduring faith. Is it, how do you? Can't wrap my head around it. Yeah. Yeah. I, w what I want to do is do two things. I want to make sure that I protect the dignity of her moment, yeah. the dignity of her life. She is so illustrating Christ. Oh, I so would beautiful. never want to mm -hmm. say or do anything that would make her or anybody in her condition. I have friends that I that I'm ministering to that are in very very similar. Uh, uh, condition. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would never want them to somehow feel less than or that they don't have enough faith or that uh, somehow this is, you know, God's punishment on their life or mm -hmm. uh, that nonsense. I, mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> but I also don't want to create a theology that I don't want to create theology around, around what doesn't happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, I, I mean, I, I don't have good, ex I don't have explanations at yeah. all. Uh, yeah. What I do have is a pool of Bethesda, you know. Mm -hmm. One guy was healed. Uh, history tells us there could be as many as 900, 1,000 people around yeah. that pool. Yeah. There's only one person healed. Does it mean that Jesus rejected the rest? No. Mm -hmm. Jesus wasn't showing us, he was showing us what one person could do that was yielded to the Father. Mm -hmm. he, he was mm -hmm. illustrating that heart to us. And so the Bible celebrates the one yeah. in that moment yeah. without condemning the others. And this kind of a thing, well, I, I've got it in my own family. You know, my son is is such a champion in faith and a champion of so many things, but he's got a, a hearing loss that is, is quite profound. Yep. And he functions so well in life. But I'll come home with testimonies of... of Healing, healing of uh, deaf ears. Uh, he's prayed for the deaf and had yeah. had them yeah. healed, you know. But I, I remember a while back in a staff meeting, I, I was sharing a story about several deaf uh, people that uh, that could hear. And I looked over at my son, and he looked at me and he said, he mouthed, we're one day closer, Dad. <laughs> I, oh, that just wrecked me. Wow. That, that, he, that he, he still has been able to protect his heart to not be jaded, you know, after this many years yeah. being prayed for so many times. Yeah, some weird stories, too. People putting oh, fingers in his ears yeah, and all this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we do all kinds of weird things <laughs> as people. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, and he's just really protected his heart, and he's really a hero to me in so many ways because he's he's made sure to protect his heart, open for the miracle, yeah. and yet he, he's not holding God hostage yeah. to the miracle. Yeah. It's like if you really love me, it's not that sort of thing. That's that's a cruel position yeah. for us to be in and to put him in. Yeah. yeah. So he's Eric's living with that both the breakthrough faith and the coping faith, yeah. the enduring yeah. faith. Yeah. And that these aren't exclusive. Yeah. They they kind of there are situations where they, they live together. Yeah. And yeah. like we talk about even <clears throat> folks that have had a breakthrough after thirteen years, I'm praying for you, like, well you were wow, you you were living with a lot of coping faith. <laughs> Yeah. until this breakthrough faith yep. kind of came into the scene and, and reordered your life or reset the picture. Yep, exactly.